What's up everyone, it's Dakota. And in this week's video, we are going to be learning about some very powerful new functionality in Microsoft Power BI. It was released in October, so that's two months ago. Sorry, I'm a little late on the modeling section. It is how to use calculation groups, how to create them in Power BI Desktop, just like you'd create any other measure, why they're useful, why they're gonna save you a ton of time and why you should learn them. So let's jump right in. So what are calculation groups? Why do we care? Why is this addition actually good for us as we implement business intelligence in our workplaces and in our businesses? First things first, it allows us to reuse DAX code. So if you've built anything in terms of a complex dashboard in Power BI, you've probably seen yourself rewriting the same DAX code many times in many different measures. I'll give you an example. Let's say you have a dashboard for sales and uh, you have some information on expenses. If you wanted to do a year over year or a quarter over quarter, month over month, or a actuals versus plan type measure, you would have to reference the sales measure and create one for that. Then reference the expense measure, create one for that. All of a sudden you've got like 12 measures in your data model, it makes no sense. Calculation groups allow us to completely ignore all that. It also allows us to use effectively measures inside of a slicer, whereas previously we could only use columns to select different values. This allows us to very quickly and dynamically change the different representations of values we have in our dashboard. It's something we didn't have before, and now they've brought it into Power BI Desktop. So kudos to Microsoft. Let's actually learn how to build this thing in Power BI. I'm going to jump over right now. Okay, so hopping into Power BI, I'm going to show you exactly how to access the calculation groups functionality. Right now, it's in preview mode. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go into File, go into Options and Settings, Options. Down here in Preview Features, open that up and make sure you have this button checked here, Model Explorer and Calculation Group Authoring. As I mentioned at the very beginning, previously, you were able to do this, but you were only able to do it in a third party software like Tabular Editor. Now they know how val valuable it is. They brought it directly into Power BI Desktop. So click that, press OK, and you're going to have to restart Power BI, but um, very quick there. The data I'm going to use is financial statement data because I think it very clearly shows the value in using calculation groups and calculation items. So I've created a second tab here that just has my very simple income statement. Where we're going to go first is over here into the model view. Of course, the model view always shows you your semantic model for your data set. It was previously called data set. Microsoft is now calling it semantic model. It shows you the relationships between all of your data tables. What's new is over here on the right, you've got a new tab called model. And model has a few new things and a few new terms that uh, if you haven't seen this before are going to be totally fresh for you. One of them is called calculation groups. That's what we're learning about today. The next one is cultures. And then you've got perspectives and roles is also new. But um, measures, relationships, and tables, those should all be familiar concepts for you. Let's go into calculation groups. Do a right click here, do new calculation group. You can also click it up here in the ribbon for calculation group, just like you were creating a new measure. Let's take the opportunity here to rename our calculation group. And this is going to be called metrics. Without an X, so that makes no sense. And under here, calculation items, they, they give you the first one and what they start you with as just selected measure. So selected measure is probably a new concept for you. All this is, is it's taking, it's taking whatever measure you're going to feed it in a visual and it's almost creating a variable for it or it is creating a variable for it. We're going to be creating a few calculation items, right? Because these are each of our different selections we're inevitably going to have in a slicer. The first calculation item is just going to be called current period. 
And that is going to be that selected measure syntax that we have. I'll show you what that is here in a second and how it looks. Then we're going to be creating one more calculation item here. And this one is going to be called year over year change. And in here, we're going to establish a couple of variables. One is going to be current period, which of course is just whatever our existing data is. And then we're going to have prior period. And that's going to be a calculate statement of our selected measure. And we'll do same period last year and we'll close that up after we enter the date column. Then we want to return the current period minus the prior period, right? Because it's year over year change. Press enter. So we've got two calculation items in our calculation group called metrics. Let's hop back into our canvas here. And what I'm going to do is show you that the calculation group has its own icon here. It's not the same as a table or a grouping of measures. And you can drag that calculation group right in here and it actually treats it as a column. This is what I was mentioning. You have the ability to use it inside of a slicer. Whereas if you just have a bunch of measures, you can't just throw them all on a slicer and hope that you could pick one and have it show up in your visual. So I will make it the new slicer here, which gives us some nice tiles that we can customize a little later. But basically here is I now have the option to select either my standard current period income statement data or that year over year change that we just calculated. So this is a very quick way to put your first calculation items to use. We're using time intelligence here. Now let's make it a little more complex and let's make it related to actual financial statement analysis. Let's do something like a percentage of revenue analysis on our income statement. I'll show you exactly how easy this is. Hop back in the model view in your calculation group, do a new calculation item. And this one's gonna be called percentage of revenue. And what it's going to be is it's going to be that selected measure divided by our revenue measure that we're using in the income statement table. Press enter there. Now we have a third item here to select in our slicer. If you click percentage of revenue, it looks a little weird, right? Well, let's make it look a whole lot better by coming back here and going to dynamic format string, you can literally apply a specific formatting to every one of your calculation items. That's super powerful if you have some things being returned as percentages, some as currency, some as different types of currency. So you can define it for each of your calculation items. So here I've enabled dynamic format string, and then I get an option up here it's either the item, which is your DAX syntax for your calculation item, or the format. And the format that we want, let's do 0.0, .0 percentage, so just percentage format with one decimal place. Press enter there. Let's plot back in our report view. And just like that, we have a very nice option for percentage of revenue, a very common way to look at an income statement. You can switch back to our normal forecast here or the year over year change. And that is a quick summary of how you can easily make three calculation items and without muddying the waters of your existing measures you have in your report. I hope you guys found this tutorial on Power BI's new calculation group super useful. They just came out a couple months ago. It can help you clean up the amount of measures you have in your model and really simplify everything. So if you like what you saw, I'll be making more content. Hit subscribe. You can always download all of our free templates at the link below in the description. Thanks for watching.